two. Testing, testing. Okay, what's going on, fam? It is time to do the walkthrough of the new screen print pricing matrix builder ver <laughs> version two. Um, first off, this mic that I got, I was all excited to get it because it's USB. It just plugs right in. I don't have to have any like phantom power or a mixer. So I'm really excited about it, but it doesn't have a pop filter. So my P's, they go pop, you know, and then there's a pop and it's annoying and I apologize. We're going to do a walkthrough on how to set these, uh, these screen print pricing matrix up because it, it is new and it gives you the user a, a crap load more flexibility as far as how you set the software up to work for your shop. But you know, with, with flexibility comes complexity and it, it, we definitely need to walk through it so you can understand what's going on. So there's another video that I just uploaded. I'll link it in the description of this video. And it's, it's simply me walking you through using the project builder. So how you would actually uh, assemble a quote. So if you're not familiar with the system, you're going to want to go watch that one first. So you understand how it works. Because now what we're going to be doing is diving into the back end of that and how to set it up so that it will generate the pricing you need for your shop. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to come over here and there's a new menu on the left menu called matrices. They all, all this stuff used to be under settings. Now it's under matrices. So you're going to click on this and we're going to start by talking about the color books. Originally, you only had the ability to create one color book. Now you can create as many as you want. And by default, when you sign up, you will have uh, the majority of the most popular you know, color swatch books in the industry. We got FN Inc., Green Galaxy International, Union Inc., Will Flex. And I also did a bunch of footwork and got you the Madeira Classic Rayon thread book and the Madeira Poly Neon thread book. I'm pretty sure I got them all. One or two thread colors may be missing. You can easily add them later. Or when you find that it's missing, you can just add it. Uh, so the way that these color books work is first you start by creating a color book. Okay, and then this one we're actually going to call this um, Banner. And there's a reason for this, and we'll talk about this in a second. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to be setting up a workflow, a workflow for printers that, that do uh, banner printing. So we're going to call this color book banner. And you can upload an image of a logo or a graphic, whatever you want to right here. And that's what will be uh, over here. It'll just show over here. Uh, it sorts alphabetically by default. Okay, so what, what we did is we, we created banner. So now what we're going to do is click on this new book right here. Let it load, and you'll just be greeted with a blank screen. To create your first swatch, you simply click the plus button, and you name it. And in this case, what we're going to do is set up some banner options. So what I'm going to do is call this first swatch, uh, let's call it, I don't know, a glossy. Okay, let's call it glossy. I don't know much about printing banners, so, you know. Now, I'm going to just use the hexadecimal color picker here. You could also upload an image if you wanted to, whatever, whatever options you want. So I'm going to call this first option glossy. Hit save. Give it a second just to load. You'll know that it's loaded when the uh, the options go away. And I'm going to add a second one, and we're going to call this, I guess, Matt, maybe? Matt. That's fine for now. Uh, I'm just going to make it a... And this is how you do it. You can drag and arrange these things, you know, however you... Sometimes, it, you know, it's got to reload itself. But you can arrange them to, to sort however. However you arrange them here is how they will show up... Um, here you know so whatever's first whatever second you can arrange it to kind of to have show up what i don't know dude what am i saying it'll, it'll be arranged accordingly and it'll it'll oh wait, goodness gracious what am i saying so this is how you create a color book uh if you want to add colors it's just exact same thing if you want to go to one of our existing books that we've created for you and you just need to add a color just scroll to the bottom hit the plus sign add the color you can upload the image like you can see right here i used images just for the the silvers and the golds and stuff like that so you create it and uh, that's it. That's color books. Now what you want to do is make sure that you have your color book sorted out before you start working on your matrix group, which we have did. We've got the banner color book right here. Next, you're going to go to your matrix groups. Sometimes this is happening. It redirects the first time you select it. It's, it's a goofy little glitch. We haven't been able to completely sort it out, but we'll get it sorted eventually. Once you come to your matrix groups, you want to stop it, start at the top and work your way down. So starting with system quantity range, you need to come in here and set whatever your minimums and maximums are. So for instance, th now this is site wide. So if your site, like let's say for screen printing, you have a minimum of 24 pieces, but with embroidery, you'll do as, as few as one. Then you're going to need to set your minimum quantity at one. That's just 
That's just the way the system is going to work. Okay, so you're going to set your minimum quantity, and then um, you know, you're going to set whatever the next range is. So in this case, we're going to actually do 11. So it's 1 to 11. Uh, you know, and then the next one would be 12 to 23 and you just, you can set this up and adjust this to work however you need it to in your shop. You can add more columns. You can also delete columns. So you can take it down to just one column if you want, or you could have, I don't know, 200 columns if, if you were so inclined, it's up to you. Uh, this is also where you just set your default sales tax rate. You can enter that in right here. So in Arizona, I think it's 8.6 right now. Um, you can turn on if you want to accept 50% deposits. So by default, the system asks for payment 100%. But if you send an invoice to one of your customers and you want to give them the option to pay 50%, you're going to check this and then that will turn on, and then that will turn on uh, uh, accepting 50% deposits. You can also turn off the price per view or a price per piece and turn off inventory view. And that these are that's what you see right here. You got the inventory from S and S and then you got the price per piece. And it's located on the um, breakdown for the garments itself. Dude, I'm thinking so clearly right now. I apologize, but stick with me. Once you have your system quantity range set up, then you're gonna go tackle your item markups. Now by default you have all of the stuff that you're seeing here when you first sign up. So I have set this up very basic. I have a, an option for less than six, which means any item from SNS that costs less than $6, $6 or less, will get the first line markup. So for instance, Gildan 5000 is what, 210 right now? I don't know, they may have j jumped it up. I haven't looked in a second. But let's just say it's $2.10, the wholesale, the base wholesale cost from SNS, then it's gonna get the first line markup. Now, if you go to say a hoodie, and that thing costs between six and twelve dollars from SNS, it's going to get this line item markup, and so on and so forth. You can add as many rows as you want. You can get as granular as you want, uh, or you could take it down to just one row. You know, it depends on how you want to do it. If you don't want to add markups to the items, you just simply put zero in here. Put zero everywhere, and you can make up the price in some other way through matrices or whatever. The sky's the limit. The other thing you can do is set things by default and you can also create another matrix under item markup for like let's say your custom products. So you can select SNS, you can also do custom and you can create a second markup option for any products that you've created, for any custom products you've created over here. Uh, and so once you have this sorted out, we can move on to the groups. So by default, I have given you a screen printing group, an embroidery group and a heat transfer vinyl group. And if you look inside any of these groups, you'll see that like the screen printing is the only one where I have two matrices. I have the automatic screen printing price matrix, which is set by default. And then I also created a second matrix for manual screen printing because manual screen printing tends to cost more per piece, especially in the higher quantities. So, you know, this is an option where if we're wanting to be a little cheaper, we'll use automatic screen printing. And if we want to be actually making money as manual printers, then we'll use this one. Uh, this is also where you can set uh, your color cards. So if you want to switch your color cards, you would do it from this drop down. And all the color books that you've created will show up right here. But we're going to stick with Wolflex. Uh, you can enter your setup fees. And so for per color, that's going to be, it charges the setup fee for every color you add. So we'll just put a, a $15 setup fee. And we're going to do a $5 Pantone mixing fee. And I'm going to save that. And over here as well, I'm going to switch this to $5, and I'm going to save this. And you can see that I checked the automatic matrix by default. And what that means is when you come to step three, you can see where you can select the matrices. Right now, the automatic one is, is selected by default, and I can easily select the manual screen printing matrix if I need to. So this is one of the big changes from the original one. You can have as many matrices as you want, and you can select which matrix you're going to use right here at step three. Okay, so... And you'll also know these buttons. We're going to tackle this in a second. Uh, so, yeah, in this case, I think we're pretty good to go. You can see if we go to embroidery, we've given you one matrix. And then this matrix is a stitches per inch matrix. So I've selected the Madeira Classic Rayon Color Book, and I have set this at 2,000 stitches per inch. And this is cool because if you come to embroidery, you have the option to override the sliders, but by default, the sliders are going to do it. So you set the width. So let's just say it's a, let's just say that the graphic is three inches wide uh, and two inches tall. It's going to do three times two times 2,000 stitches per inch. And then it's going to use that to, to uh, you know, pull from whatever the range is. So that would be, what, 12,000 stitches. So it's going to pull from 
this line right here based on the quantity. Now, if you want to, you can override it. So like, let's just say you know that the graphic is actually five inches wide, uh, two inches tall, but you know that the stitch count is only gonna be, I don't know, 8,000 stitches. You can input 8,000 total stitches here and it's gonna basically disconnect this part, the slider. You'll still have your width and height, but you just entered 8,000 stitches, so it's going to go to this, this line instead. So it's gonna pull the pricing from the 8,000 to 8,999 stitches. All of these ranges can be adjusted by you. You can just click them, edit them. You can add more rows. You can delete rows and make it simpler. Again, it's all up to you. It's completely customizable. You can also add additional matrices, as many as you want within this group. Same thing with heat transfer vinyl, but heat transfer vinyl is using the per square inch matrix. So we've given you a bunch of different types of matrices uh, for different things. Okay, what we're going to do though is we're going to create a new group and we're going to call this group a banner. I don't know if you would call it vinyl banner. I'm not a banner printer, so excuse my ignorance as I'm going through and setting this part up. So we just created a new group, or a new group called Banner, and we're just going to create one simple matrix. We're going to select from the matrix type, and as far as I know with banners, most of you tend to do a per item situation, so that's what we're going to select. And we're going to use the color card that I created called Banner. There we go. Now the per item is a little bit different because each matrix you can set like a particular dimension. So in this case, I don't know how big banners are, you know. Uh, what are they like three by six or three by eight? I don't really know, but you're just going to want to do it in inches. And, and in this case, because I'm an idiot, we're just going to say it's a, I don't know. So let's just say 72 inches wide and uh, 36 inches tall. Okay, so I'm going to set my dimensions. And then the next thing I'm going to do is select from those two, uh, the, you remember the two color book swatches that we created earlier? I'm gonna select which line I want to be glossy. I'm gonna add another row and I'm gonna select this one for matte. So what will happen is when you come in, well, we're gonna have to reload that and I'll show you. So let's just set this at 12 and 10. I'm just gonna set a couple of input numbers here for, for time's sakes. I'm gonna hit save. <clears throat> I'm gonna actually put a $10 art fee in here as well. Hit save again. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna move on to the next step. So now we've created our ban our new ban our new ugh, God, I'm like a champion with words. Now that we've created our banner group, uh, we need to move on to setting up our locations for that option. So we've, we've set up our group. Now it's time to move on to locations. So let's talk about see what it does sometimes. It just does this reroute to the uh, dashboard. We'll get that fixed in time. It's not a priority right now, but we'll get there. These are our locations and this is what I wanted to just, just to show you, originally on the original system, you were really locked in to front, back, left, and right. And now we've given you the option to create as many different locations as you want to. I would still try to stick to, you know, maybe no more than six. You don't want this to be two layers deep, you know, and one's called banner, and one's called this, and one's called that. A banner has a front and a back, so I would create an option in here, right, on my front, and I would call this new button right here, banner. That's what I. That's the way I would do it. You, you just want to keep as few locations as possible and then add as many options to each location as you want to. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is work on adding this button to, uh, to the front and back location for banner. Right, so let's come back in here. Front, back, left, right, sleeve, printed neck, and then we added the printed neck label. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do is because we know that we want to keep the banner to front and back. So we're going to come select front in the group here. And you can see we have screen printing, embroidery, heat transfer, vinyl. Now we're going to create a new one, and we're going to call this Banner. Easy. Uh, as far as our embellishment style, you just need to select the proper uh, color, or you need to select the proper matrix. So we, in the matrix group, we created the banner as a per item. So I'm going to select per item here. And all this is is the each, like uh, each matrix type has certain options or a lack of options here you know, depending on how it's been set up. So we're calling this banner, I selected per item here. I could have also selected per color if this was like, say for the screen printing button, like you can see up here, screen printing, we selected per color, embroidery stitches per inch, heat transfer vinyl is per square inch, and now we're doing a per item option. Hit save, and we did that for the front. Now we need to go to the back and do the same thing. We're gonna go like this, we're gonna call this banner as well. Uh, we're gonna select per item again, and we're going to hit save. So let's reload this page. All right. And now you can see that we have screen printing, banner, embroidery, heat transfer, vinyl. 
And uh, just like just like right here, we got the front, got the back. But what we need to do is arrange this. So I'm going to take it, and I want to have the banner thing here at the bottom. Hit save, good to go. It automatically saves there. I'm going to grab this banner, drag this one to the bottom. Hit that, you get good to go. We're going to reload this. And now you can see it's arranged, the banner's at the bottom. So we just set up the button option here. So we can select from screen printing, and embroidery, heat transfer vinyl, but banner is not yet an option because we have one more step to make this work. So we're going to come back here to the thing. We've set up our front and our back option. We don't need to do anything for left sleeve or right sleeve or the printed neck label because that doesn't apply to the banner, right? But if we wanted to add more options to the left sleeve, like right now, you can still do screen printing, embroidery, heat transfer vinyl, right sleeve. But on the printed neck label, we just put screen print in there and we used it as per color. Hopefully you guys are following along. If not, I don't know. I don't know how to make it any more clear. I'm doing the best I can here. All right, so now we've set up our location. Now we're going to adjust our placements. We're going to set our placements up. And this is an important feature. See, there it goes again, rerouting that. I, you know, we'll get that fixed. All right, so again, we need to tackle the front and the back. And then these are a little out of arrangement. It's kind of goofy the way that they're set up. We didn't make this draggable or rearrangeable, but it doesn't really matter because it doesn't need to be, which is why we didn't take the extra time to code it to be arranged. So what we're doing now is setting up our placements and what our placements are, are these right here, the selections like, you know, so you can set up as many custom placements as you want. And that's why I say, keep your plate, uh, your locations to a minimum, because you can be more granular with the definitions of each location here. So what we've done is for screen printing, we set up center chest, left chest and bottom hem. So when you create a location, when you come to front, you'll see that it creates a tab up here. So if you didn't have if you didn't have any of these, there would be no tab. So you have to set up your locations first, and then you can come set your placement. So you can see we already set our placements for screen printing, center chest, left chest, bottom hem. We also have them set up for embroidery, center chest, left chest. Actually, we did bottom hem left, bottom hem right on the front. Um, heat transfer vinyl, center chest, left chest, and banner has no options, so we need to set some up. Now the banner should be quite a bit simpler. I think just for the front, we'll just we're just going to call this front, or first you could call it side one. I don't really know how how you guys do it. I'm just going to call it front. I don't know how the banner people uh, identify these things, but we're going to call it front, and then we're just going to make sure to select the banner matrix right there, and that's it. We're going to hit save. Okay. Now, we don't need to add any more options for the banner because it's just a banner. You're, you're printing one side or you're printing both sides. So what we're going to do now is go to the back, and we're going to come over here to the banner tab because we haven't had any placements yet, and we're going to call this a back. Simple. And we're going to, again, select the matrix of a banner, and we're going to hit uh, save. Now, let's go see what we've done. So we're back here at the step three. We had to go to the front. We can now see our banner options. So when I click on this, it's from the front. That's selected automatically. Um, the price matrix is we didn't rename this. That's one thing we should have done. I did not mention that if you go to the matrix group oh Goodness gracious matrix group right here. We're gonna go to banner and right now I just left it price matrix if you click in there you can name it But we're just gonna call this banner hit save sometimes it'll duplicate it So that's not gonna show up here right now because I haven't reloaded the page, but ultimately this will be called banner right here uh, and the, the difference here is because this is per item, what you'll do is you'll just put from the, make sure the matrix is correct. You can type in any special notes you need to right there. And then you're going to select your color, and I'm just going to select glossy for this option. Boom. Okay, so now I've added my banner for the front location, and on the back, I'm going to come to banner as well. It says back, price matrix is good. I'm going to type some special notes, color, and then this one I'm going to do, let's say we're going to print it matte on the back side. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so we've just set that up. So now I've just set up a custom flow here, and uh, that's how you do it. It's that simple. So it's not hard to set up. It just takes a little bit more work on your part to get everything working correctly. Some of the issues you're going to run into that you may easily overlook is something like this. So let's start with locations. You've created your matrix group. Everything's good. <clears throat> you, you created your button. Again, locations represent these buttons okay so keep that in mind so one thing you may mess up is you may not have the proper embellishment style when you created it the embellishment style should match the type of matrix that it is okay that's one area that you may mess up and then the other area that, that I've had a few people kind of get lost on is with the placements so for instance on the front uh, 
you can see under screen printing, center chest, left chest, and bottom hem, they've all got the screen printing price, price matrix assigned to them. Embroidery, which is the entire group. So this is the entire screen printing price matrix group that I created. Embroidery is the same thing. We have embroidery there. Heat transfer vinyl says heat transfer vinyl. And then the banner says banner. Now these price matrices are... These are the, the name of the groups, right? So screen printing, embroidery, heat transfer vinyl, and banner. And if we come back to placements, go to front, screen printing, screen printing, embroidery, heat transfer, banner. So just make sure that you have the proper matrix selected under the placements area. And that's it. Once you have these things set up, you will be up and running and you will be able to use the, uh, the print project builder to set up even the most complicated of screen print or embroidery or banner orders with ease. With just by clicking a few buttons and, and you'll be moving right through this quick lickety split. Uh, let's see if there's anything else to talk about with the setup stuff. Uh, finishings. So, you know, the finishings and all this good stuff are still here. Uh, you just you build them out and then you just input your numbers for like say folding and bagging or heat press finishing or reflective ink Whatever you want to do you input those right here uh, Ink type so just to be clear what ink type is if you this was set up for shops that do say uh, Plastisol ink and water-based ink if you only do Plastisol just create one ink type called Plastisol and uh, It won't show up in the steps so but if you have two options, like say you do Plastisol and water-based screen printing, then those options will show up as like step uh, step five. So you'll have your finishings options, but then there'll also be another step called uh, ink type. So this is really, you can just avoid it, leave it at Plastisol unless you also print water-based ink. And shipping discounts, this isn't actually shipping discount. What this is, is you, you need to input your, box, your boxes and all that. You need to put the sizes in here. So for instance, 12 to 17 t-shirts, uh, the size of the box, the length of the box, the height of the box. This is like a running average, and all that this is used for is to estimate shipping. This does not affect the actual final price that you'll charge for shipping, but this will uh, estimate what you're charging the customer, right? So in most cases, you want the measurements or the dimensions to be larger than you expect them to be to make sure that you're, you're not undercharging for shipping. You see, this is one of the areas that you're gonna need to you're gonna need to fudge it a little bit and and do some massaging to get it to make sure that it's accurately estimating the proper shipping price for your customers. But basically, all you're doing is okay for 12 to 17, we only need one box, and the average box is 16 wide, 20 inches long, and six inches high. And then you go up to like say, usually you only need one box up to 72 pieces, and then after 72, you know you may need two boxes. At, at those same dimensions. That's where you got to kind of do some massaging. That's up to you. Don't worry about it too much in the beginning. Don't let it stress you out, but you'll get that thing working for you. Anyway, guys, you all rule, and thank you so much for signing up. Uh, any questions, any bugs to report, anything like that, please email a screenshot along with your question to support at theprintlife.com. Talk to you soon. Later.